Okay, so the problem says, write the equation for the dissolution of aluminum sulfate. We have to take a look at the two key words over there. Dissolution, as I was saying before, it means that you're going to dissolve something, like when you're trying to dissolve salty water, okay? And they're giving you the substance. That substance, the something is aluminum sulfate. Aluminum sulfate, the composition of it, as you know, you have here, a, aluminum is a metal, and sulfate is a polyatomic anion, okay? In the end, this two tells you that you have an ionic compound, okay? So, when you are dissolving an ionic compound, dissociation occurs. Okay, so when you have ionic, remember this, dissociation occurs. Now, what is dissociation? Dissociation is the process that we were working the other, the other week. I give you the ionic compound, and the ionic compound is being decomposed into its ions. So, for example, here, we are talking about aluminum sulfate, that dissociation will be. Here you have your aluminum sulfate, okay? You identify already that you have a metal and a, and a polyatomic anion. When you're talking about dissolution process, it means that you're going to dissolve in water, okay? So, after the aluminum sulfate is being trying to be dissolved in water, it's going to be dissolved or separate break down into its ions forms. So the metal comes apart the metal comes apart and the ion, the polyatomic ion also comes apart like that. Remember you have your metal here and you have your polyatomic ion over there. Okay? Now, what happens? You have to balance what, uh, what it is being produced, what is being produced, sorry. So, take a look right here. How many aluminums do we have? Two, Two aluminums. So we write it as a coefficient like that. Now, how many sulfates I have? Three. I have three. Remember, this three that is outside the parentheses multiplies everything that is inside. Everything that is inside is sulfate. So sulfate in the end is being multiplied by three. So you need to get rid of, I mean, you need to balance it by writing a 3 over there. And with this, your equation is, and your dissociation equation is already balanced. Now, we need to answer the questions. It says, the first question says, how many moles of aluminum ions and sulfate ions are produced by dissolving one mole of aluminum sulfate? So, one mole of aluminum sulfate it's going to produce how many aluminum ions remember that when we talk about ions we talk about their charges too aluminum has a charge of three plus and sulfate has a charge of negative two okay so, how many aluminum ions are being produced? How many aluminum ions are being produced? How many aluminum ions are being produced?
Did you listen to me? Yes, we hear you, Miss. Thank you. How many aluminum ions are being produced? Three? No. Two? Two. It is the coefficient, the one that we look. We are just answering the question. The procedure is already done. Okay? But we need to answer the question. They are produced two aluminum ions, two moles of aluminum ions. So here you just write moles, okay, instead of coefficients, okay? You write two moles of aluminum ions. But also they are produced three moles of sulfate ions. And sulfate, you need to write the charge that is negative two. That's everything is being produced, okay? To answer the first question, to answer the first question, just say, okay, there are produced two aluminum ions and three sulfate ions, like that. But another question is being, is part of the problem, okay? It says, what is the total number of moles of ions produced by dissolving one mole of aluminum sulfate? So here they are asking you the total moles, okay? The total number of moles. So all you have to do is add in the individual ions that are produced. So to answer the other question, you can say there are produced in total in total five mole ions. There are produced in total five mole ions. All you have to do is add in the individual ions, 2 plus 3. And with this, you answer the two questions. But as you can see, all we have to do in this exercise was dissociation process. Now, I want to continue with the presentation from the other day. Sheila, turn the camera on, please. Okay, uh, today I will explain you what is the net ionic equation, okay? I will explain you with a procedure. Take a look. Reactions of ions in aqueous solutions are usually represented by net ionic equations rather than formula equations. Formula equations are the regular equations that we have been working with so far, okay? But when we talk about aqueous solution uh, reaction, uh, we normally use what we know as the net ionic equation. A net ionic equation includes only those compounds and ions that undergo a chemical change in a reaction in an aqueous solution. So an aqueous solution is a reaction that takes place in water. That's why it's called aqueous. So after the reaction takes place, a new compound is going to be formed. Now, that is the compound that we care about, okay? And that's why we need the net ionic equation for this topic. So all I'm going to do right now is showing you this example below, okay? The formula equation that I'm giving you is Ammonium sulfide, aqueous ammonium sulfide plus aqueous carbon nitrate produce two moles of ammonium nitrate in aqueous solution plus two uh, plus cadmium sulfide. Take a look to that equation over there, the formula equation. 
Now I'm going to my presentation, to my whiteboard, here, no, eso no era, here. Now that is the equation that we had in the, that we had before, okay? Let me try to arrange it a little bit. I don't know about you, but I think it is. But well, I'm going to write it again then. It's not, I don't know. I mean, I don't see the equation. I don't know if you see it, but I don't see it. But I don't see it because I have a problem with my computer. But do you see the equation? Do you see it um, very... Need very with high resolution, or it's not, or it's just too tiny. How is it? I see a well me. But the other I'm, I'm writing again looks better, right? Yes. 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 I'm gonna do it like this better. Okay. Okay. So, you have this equation. And the instruction will be, write the net ionic equation from this formula equation, okay? That's the instruction. You will have to write the formula equation. So I'm going to list uh, the number of steps, okay? Uh, the first step will be uh, recognize or identify the aqueous solution substances, okay? So recognize Substances. So all I'm going to do right now in this moment is I'm going to highlight just those that are AQ. In a specific color because, you know, I'm the teacher, okay? So. Okay, so I have my AQ solutions here here and also here. The second step is that you will recognize the solid substances. The solid substances from now on in this kind of in this kind of equations that are known as Aqueous solution equations, okay, this kind of substances that are solid are going to be known from now on as a precipitate. A precipitate is an ionic compound that cannot be dissolved. A precipitate is an ionic compound that cannot be dissolved, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, my solid or my precipitate is going to be this one. That is going to be the first step. So I'm going to call, but this is for me because I am the teacher, okay? I don't want that you get confused. So I'm going to call this my substance A. This will be my substance B. And this will be my substance C. And the reason why I call them by a single letter is because in the third step, all you have to do is dissociation, okay? All 
of the AQ substances. Only the AQ substances, you will do dissociation process, the process that we did before, okay? So that is exactly what I'm going to do in this moment. So, take a look. This one right there, okay? Ammonium sulfide. I will separate into ions. And this will be Na. Or the ion ammonium has a charge of one plus. Okay. Now, how many ammonium ions I have right here? How many ammonium ions I have right there in the compound A? Six. Ammonium is the parenthesis. Okay. How many parentheses I have? Two. Two. Okay, take a look. I know, no se mira. Mira que aquí. So, remember, the number of atoms tells you the amount that you have in parentheses. So here, you have two ammonium ions. Now, what else I have right here? How many sulfide ions? How many sulfide ions? Two. No. Here I have invisible one as a substrate. Okay? This two applies only for the substance before. And for sulfur applies only the substance that is below. Because you don't see the substance, it is invisible one. So, it is invisible one, sulfide ion. What is the charge of the sulfide ion? What is the charge of the sulfide ion? Two. Two negative. Negative two. That is correct. Now, we finish with the compound A. We continue with the compound B. I'm writing the compounds like this because I am the teacher, okay? You don't need to write the compounds like this. But if you want, I won't get angry. Now, here, how many cadmium ions do we have? One. One. So you have invisible one, cadmium. What is the charge of cadmium? It is in your periodic table. It is two positive. It is very close to silver and those kind of elements. Now we continue. How many nitrates are there? Two. Two. Nitrate. What is the charge of nitrate? Negative three. Negative one. Negative three is nitrate. It is not the same. This is nitrate and this is nitrate. Okay, it's not the same. Remember, where do you find all this? In the table of the polyatomic ions that I gave you at the beginning of the school year. And I forgot to write, but all of them include the state, the physical state that is AQ. So this will be AQ. Okay, the sulfur will be AQ. The cadmium will be AQ, and the nitrate will be also AQ. Now, I continue. And I begin to work with the compound C. 
Now, the situation here is a little bit different because this two is a coefficient, okay? And what happens here? This is like a um, distributive property in math, okay? The two that is outside the parentheses multiplies everything inside. So here it's going to give you two uh, ammonium, sorry, and also uh, two nitrates, like that. That is how you do it. Remember that two that is outside multiplies everything that is in the other side. The ion positive and the negative ion. So in the end, you will have two ammonium ions with a charge of one positive that is in aqueous solution plus again I repeat this one multiplies the second substance to the polyatomic ion so this will be also 2 and all 3 Now, what happens if, for some reason, you forget to balance? What happens if you forget to balance? Now, take a look. What happens if you say, no, I just see one nitrate. I'm going to write one nitrate. So what is going to happen? In the end, Remember that we see that all, everything must be balanced, okay? So if in the reactants you have two nitrates, you must have two nitrates in the product. So in case that you forget, in case that you didn't notice, means that you have to balance after, okay? So in case that you miss it, you still can balance after doing dissociation. So now your nitrate is balanced, and the only compound that we just write exactly the way it was is the precipitate, cadmium sulfide, that is a solid, okay? Now, we did all the dissociations possible for the aqueous substances, so right now what, it, what comes next is we need to cancel you have you need to cancel the ions that are in both sides in both sides of your equation okay so what are the ions that are the same. Well, the ions are the same. For example, this one, ammonium. I have ammonium ion here, and I also have ammonium ion in the product. And as you can see, the two of them have two as a coefficient. So when this happens, you can cancel it like this what other ion is repeated what other ion is repeated cadmium which one Nitrate. Nitrate. Nitrate is here and it's also here. And both have the same coefficient. That means that we can cancel it. Now, what happens after we cancel those ions that are in both sides? Question. Can we cancel cadmium? Can we cancel um, sulfur? 
can they be canceled? Yes or no? No, no, because the product has can be. No, you can't cancel exactly. You cannot cancel. The reason is because it's not the same. It's not the same having sulfide and cadmium than the product itself that is already combined. So those ions cannot be canceled because they are not exactly the same. So in the fifth step, what we do is we write the net ion equation. What do we have in the net ionic equation? A net ionic equation has the duty to show only the formation of a precipitate. So every time you need to write a and net ionic equation means that you will show only the precipitate that was formed in the reaction. So right now all you have to do is write in the equation again but without everything that you cancel. For example it's going to be the net ionic equation will be Everything that you did not cancel, so it is sulfide ion, which has a charge of negative 2, that is an aqueous solution, okay, plus the cadmium ion that has a charge of positive 2, and that is also an aqueous solution. All of them combine, produce what we know as the precipitate, cadmium sulfide. And because it is a precipitate, we need to show the physical state of the, uh, of the substance. Now, question. Do I need to write the, um, the charges above? No, because it no can be dissolved. Exactly. You don't need to write the. Um, you cannot write the charges because it's not. It cannot be dissolved. So it means that it is a compound. Okay, it's not being dissolved, so it is a compound. And compounds, all compounds have charge equal zero. So here the precipitate has no charge. remember this. Now I know that it looks a lot, but it's not too much honestly. Remember that I explain step by step. When you do the procedure, yes, you will you will do it step by step. But you are not going to take that long, okay? So as a homework, as a practice, I will give you a reaction for you to practice this topic. I'm going to give you a reaction, a formula equation, and from the formula equation, you will do all the process from recognizing the aqueous substances, recognizing the precipitate. That is important, okay? This is very important. Recognizing the solid, recognizing the precipitate is one very important uh, part of the procedure. So you have to indicate precipitate, okay? Precipitate. I forgot. Remember, precipitates cannot be dissolved. Okay, so you do all the process and in the end, 
all you all you have left is what we know as the net ionic equation. The purpose of it is to show only the formation of the solid, the precipitate, the substance that cannot be dissolved in water. From all, uh, from everything that I explained today, do you have any doubt in any of the steps? Imagine how we can identify the precipitate. Ah, that is the most important question. Thank you for asking me. I was hoping somebody asked for it. Take a look here. Remember this table that I gave you the other day. Now, how do we recognize the precipitate? Because here the problem gave you that uh, that calcium sulfide was solid. This comes from the exercise, but sometimes it's not going to give it to you. So all you have to do is using the table of solubility to identify if it is soluble. If it's not soluble, means that it is the precipitate. Now let's analyze this compound. We have cadmium sulfide. What does the table uh, tell us about cadmium sulfide? or about sulfides. What rule do we need to take a look to? Number six. Exactly, the rule number six. It, it says, most sulfides are insoluble except those of calcium, strontium, sodium, potassium, and ammonium. Cadmium does not belong to any of the exceptions, which means that most sulfides are insoluble, which means cadmium sulfide is insoluble, therefore is the precipitate. So you see how everything that I teach you is so related, okay? So you need to be using everything for these topics. You're gonna be using the table of of the charges, the, the one of the polyatomic ions, and you're gonna be using this one, the one of solubility, and also doing all the procedures that I taught you before, like dissociation. But now for every compound that is aqueous. Dissociation only occurs in aqueous substances, aqueous ionic substances.